Before men learned how to control fire and put it to work, it was man's greatest enemy. In much the same way, your emotions can be your own greatest enemy. Or under control, your emotions can make you healthier and happier and improve the lives of people around you. I think of fire in connection with emotions because when you become stirred up, when your emotions control your actions, it affects not only yourself, but the people around you. Psychologists find that control of emotions can be gained by understanding the stimulus response pattern. When you have certain experiences, you respond with various emotions. Stimulus response. Just as this sort of stimulus produces this sort of involuntary muscular response. Well, that's a rather simplified suggestion of a complex mental process. But you get the idea. Cause, effect. Nature endows us at birth with three general patterns of emotional response. Rage is the response to the primary stimulus of thought. Something interfering with our behavior, our actions. Fear is the response to loud noises or loss of support. And the emotional response to love is usually the result of a show of affection or favors. And these seem to be the emotions with which we start life. Then as we grow up, many everyday things and social situations become associated with these primary stimuli partly by a process called conditioning. And so many things and people cause us to respond emotionally. And in general, that's good. For there are many factors involved in a personality. And a balance of emotions is important to a well-rounded personality. But emotions out of control, well, Let's take a look at a slice of everyday life to understand how some stimuli can bring about various emotional responses. What might happen to you, or to me, or to Jeffrey Moore? Jeff is an ordinary and healthy and well-balanced young fellow. He usually gets along well with people. And on this particular Friday afternoon, Jeff and his pals are discussing a big triple date tonight. My dad's going to let me have that car tonight. Oh, the car! Yeah. That's super! <laughs> that sounds swell, Jeff, but... Well, I don't know if, if I'll be able to go. I, I got quite a headache. A headache, huh? Yeah. Well, how about letting Jeff, the old soda jerk, fix you up a snappy salsa? Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, why don't I get going? Ha! Some jerk. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Bob, I saw the whole Y stunt. Now, uh, just suppose you clean it up. <laughs> Go on, wise guy, clean it up. Yeah, it's right <laughs> on the floor there. <laughs> Look at the washwoman. <laughs> wise guys, eh? Well, suppose I don't pick you up tonight. I got a darn good notion to let you guys walk to the park. What's got into him? Gee, I don't know. Why is Jeff angry? What's the stimulus that brings on this sudden emotional response of anger or mild rage? Well, it might be that Jeff feels thwarted as he fails in the fancy trick to impress his pals. So he gets mad at his pals. And now it's later than he thought. He tries a shortcut, hurrying to get home. Great Scott, who in the world left that there what a time to water the lawn? The shortcuts often lead to trouble, and thus loss of emotional control. You've heard, haste makes waste. Jeff is frustrated by the sprinkler, but he asked for it. Of course, Jeff's going to get the car ready for the party tonight. He wouldn't really miss a chance to impress the gang. But, hmm, 
starter won't work. Again, his behavior is thwarted and a habit is being developed. A habit of allowing such things to annoy him. Jeff's losing control of himself. His thinking is becoming muddled and he's careless in his actions. The madder he gets, the worse it becomes. Did you ever hear anyone say, I was so mad I couldn't see straight? Severe emotional stress often decreases efficiency. See what I mean? And of course it's the fault of the wrench. This is called projection. He's projecting the blame to the wrench. Well, we've seen Jeff lose control of himself in rage. Let's see how the rest of the family is doing. Mother! Mother! Oh, it's wonderful! I love the new dress you made! Oh, thank you, Joan, dear. See how the new dress tends to stimulate Joan's love for Mother? This makes both Mother and Joan happier. But how does it affect Jeff? And how does his anger affect the others? Oh, you're the sweetest, bestest mother a girl ever had. I'm glad you like the dress, Joan. Oh, I'm so happy. I could be a model. Or a cover girl. Hey, what's gotten into that crazy kid sister? Oh, Jeff, don't be that way. Notice how Mother seems to become angry herself because of Jeff's anger. Perhaps she shouldn't, but anger is a violent emotion and we often see an induction of behavior or spread of emotion to other persons, almost like a contagious disease. Hi, Raj. Hello, Jeff. Say, what have you got? Well, that's my letter. Give me that. Let me. What I got you the letter. Dirty little sneak. You gonna give me that letter? Are you gonna give it to me? No. Okay, kid. I'll show you up. Mother! This dirty sneaking Mother. brother, you gonna give me my Mother, letter? Stop it! Will you give me that letter? I'll teach you not to open my mail. I didn't know that. Stop it! Stop it. <laughs> Sometimes rage, fear, and love are aroused together at the same time. Mother's love of her children and her fear for Roger's safety were mixed with anger, almost rage, at both boys for the part they played in the flare-up. Of course, Jeffrey's family didn't realize that he had been exposed to one irritating situation after another. An accumulation of stimuli which brought about an abnormally strong response. And what did this do to Jeff? This sort of uncontrolled emotional outburst. Well, he regrets some of the things he said, but he can't unsay them. He's tired. That feeling of fatigue may spoil a good time on his date tonight. And if this sort of flare-up is repeated often, it might lead to a permanently warped personality. What could Jeff do to keep better control? Well, we say he could, one, eliminate the stimulus, two, modify the stimulus, or three, modify the response. With these three ideas in mind, Let's examine Jeff's episode again. To control his emotions, Jeff eliminates the stimulus, the failure to impress his pals, by trying such fancy tricks only when he can do them successfully. But sometimes the trick fails. There are many times when you can't eliminate the stimulus. Try to modify the stimulus. Standing off and looking at himself, Jeff realizes that a slip like that won't really hurt his standing with the gang. Taking it all lightly as a good sport, Jeff impresses the gang a lot more than if he gets angry over such a little thing. 
It helps to recognize and understand the emotional patterns. Then it's easier to eliminate or modify the stimulus. And there is another, even more valuable way to control your emotions. Modify the response. Rather than get in the habit of getting angry, Jeff can substitute. He can modify his response by seeing the humor in the situation. What good does it do to get angry about this? When Jeff's in the habit of controlling his emotions, his thinking is straighter. Push the button. No starter. Let's see. Pull the light switch. Hmm. No light. That means something. Reason it out. No horn either. So, must be a dead battery. That's straight thinking, unmuddled by emotional disturbances. And it's a simple thing to call the garage or someone for a push and a recharge. No need to fly off the handle and take it out on the things and the people around. When he tries to understand his emotions and those of people around him, Jeff has less trouble controlling himself, and he and those around him are happier. The more he exercises control of his emotional behavior, the easier it becomes to meet the next situation without losing control. Well, how about it? Either the plane or the letter. And so it goes. A happier time all around when emotions are under control. Hey, Raj, how about you help me get the car pushed out of the garage so we can get it started and fixed up for tonight? You know, um, if the car's running, I can drop you off the movies tonight before I go out. Yes, by a better understanding of the emotional patterns of everyday life, and by knowing how you respond to various stimuli, you can develop better control by eliminating the stimulus, or by modifying the stimulus, or by modifying the response. You can control the fire of your emotions. You can balance your emotions and use them so that your personality becomes more pleasant. And you and those around you are a great deal happier and healthier.